Hey guys, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com. If you were able to watch our unboxing of the Dell Streak, you got a brief introduction to a very unique Android tablet device. If you didn't catch it, feel free to click on this link right here to watch it. In this video, we're going to actually show you a little bit of the device by giving you a software overview and kind of show you how some of the applications work as well as go into depth on Dell's custom skin, which makes the device much more functional. So let's get started. Welcome back. And we're actually going to get started right away on kind of giving you a brief look into the software that makes up the Dell Streak. It's very unique. Dell did skin their version of Android, just like many of the other manufacturers out there, such as HTC, Samsung, etc. The only downside here with the Streak is that it's currently running Android 1.6. It will be updated to Froyo in the near future. However, right now you're stuck with 1.6, which really doesn't mean too much. Personally, except for the fact that some of the applications may not be compatible with your device. As far as the speed goes, right now, the Streak is a very snappy device, which you will see in a second. Now, the lock screen you're going to get is, as you see right here, it's going to show your background, as well as the AT&T, basically who your carrier is. I'm using an AT&T SIM card right now, as well as the press menu to unlock with the date and time. So instead of sliding or pressing a button, you actually just go ahead and press that menu key. These are actually three capacitive buttons here. And now we're greeted to our home screen. Now these screens are actually called rooms. A little strange, different name for them, but at the same time, it definitely houses a lot of different applications there and makes it very personal. So the room name kind of makes sense. Now by default, you have the ability to have up to four rooms, which is four home screens. However, as you see here, we have these, this toolbar at the very top. Now the one that says AT&T is actually where you would go to add more rooms. So by pressing on that, we have the ability to add more room screens here, up to six total. And we also have some of our more recent or our favorite type applications. The main thing to keep in mind here is you can only add six rooms. With that being said though, this is a five inch screen, so you can fit many more icons than you typically could. As you can see here, I have two widgets. I have the beautiful widget clock, as well as the one of the Twitter widgets itself right there with some shortcuts. So, as far as fitting things go, it's really not going to be an issue at all. Now scrolling to the left and the right, you're going to have your typical layout with the home screens. This is the actual main screen that you will see right here. You can add the analog clock or, once again, one of these clock widgets as you can see. And we have the Twitter widget, which displays beautifully on the size of the screen that you have. You can fit much more than ever before. Scrolling to our left, again, it shows you a different screen as well as a different background. You can actually change the background per screen or per room on this device. So we have the mountain view here. Going back over, we have the dock look. Scrolling to the right, we have two more widgets. We have the Dell RSS reader, which is showing two feeds right now, the pocketnow.com and Engadget, as well as the typical power control, which if you're an Android user currently, you are used to seeing. And then we also have room here for more applications, shortcuts, whatever it may be. And as you can see right off the bat, this device is great in terms of housing multiple widgets per screen as well as some application shortcuts. So you're really gonna get a lot of functionality out of this device. You can just scroll right through to actually see all of your stories. Pressing on the story itself will bring you to the browser and go directly to that page. Once again, we have another page here with a different background showing the Facebook. And again, you could have the six of those rooms or home screens, however you see fit. Now Dell has really integrated something that is very different on the Dell Streak from what we've seen on many devices before. You're going to have your typical notification bar, which is actually here, and you actually press to bring it down. You don't actually swipe. So as you can see, we have the AT&T logo there, no, no notifications. But to the right of that, we're going to have the Bluetooth icon, the Wi-Fi icon, battery, etc. By pressing on that, it gives you another drop-down menu, which will allow you to set your alarm very quickly. Check your battery. As you can see right now, it gives us the actual percentage, which we're at 75%. And if you actually select that, it will give you all of your tips. So for example, right now the brightness is maximized. It'll say, hey, you know, maybe you can bring down your brightness a little bit, that sort of thing. So for the typical user, that's going to go a long way. Many of us tech people will already know how to maximize our battery life. But if you don't, or if you're new to the Android operating system, that's a great way for you to find out. It's also going to give us the ability to turn on the Wi-Fi, turn off the Wi-Fi, change a different connection as far as airplane mode, edge, that sort of thing. So this whole layout with the very quick commands is very convenient very easy to use and it allows you to change your settings on the go on the fly quite simply we can scroll down here once again and you'll see the bluetooth so if we actually just tap this button here bluetooth is now off like that very quickly very easy to use last but not least we're also going to have the drop down menu here 
which is just like every other device, however, this arrow is pointing down. It's going to give you your entire list of applications. Now, this top bar here will be basically your favorite applications. You can actually shrink this down so we only have that. But by pressing more, we now can see every application that we have currently on this device. And it's a very smooth scrolling. Doesn't seem to hiccup at all. On the right side of the device, you're going to have your typical home button, the menu button, as well as the back. There is no search, dedicated search button. However, you can put the search widget on this device without an issue in reality because the screen is so big it will fit easily and not be in the way. Now the downside right off the bat that you can see here is in order to use this device, at least in the home screen, you have to have it in horizontal or in landscape. As you can see here, I'm holding it vertically and it's not changing. So you have to actually have the device in this view just to navigate your home screen. When you go into an app, for example, let's say we go into our Gmail application. It was last being held in the vertical position, so we see it vertically. Once you turn it over to the landscape mode, a very quick reaction, and it turns back over for you. So that is a really big downside right there, especially for a device this big. If you were able to hold it in the palm of your hand vertically just to get some quick operations, you know, to maybe press the phone button, that sort of thing, it would make life a little easier. One aspect that I really want to touch on here is going to be the on-screen keyboard. By having this 5-inch screen, the keyboard would typically be much bigger than a lot of the phones that we see. However, as you can see right here, that is not necessarily the case, especially when in landscape mode. The keys are a little bigger. However, there's more space around them, which honestly gives you a little bit more forgiveness in terms of not hitting keys by mistake. But the main thing is you're going to have this number pad here, which I honestly feel like it should have been utilized with these keys here the top row of the keys like a lot of the phones are doing that would have allowed for a much wider much bigger keyboard on this device here if we bring it into the vertical mode you'll see that right there how it's actually been utilized in the top row which is not bad but these are about the same size as the evo keys a little bit bigger coming up in our next software overview video we're going to take a look at applications such as youtube the email applications the browser especially and kind of compare how the five inch screen will give you an advantage over a phone like the Evo 4G where it has a 4.3 inch screen, for example. And that is one of the aspects that really hasn't been determined yet in terms of is having a bigger screen on a phone always going to be better. There is a point where it becomes cumbersome and it's a little bit harder to use. And by showing you some of the applications and if they give you any more functionality, ease of use, whatever it may be, paired with the pocketability, which we'll be showing next in our hardware overview video, will give you a better look at determining if this phone is for you or not. If you like this device, you can actually purchase it right now in the U.S. over at negrielectronics.com. As you can see, it's at the bottom of the screen here. So it is available unlocked right now in the U.S. You can actually head over to that website to take a look at it. As always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please give us a thumbs up and feel free to leave any comments you may have about this device. It is something very, very unique to the Android world. Thanks, everyone.